Hi and welcome to TechNut, a real low mark in production quality even for us. Not only is the camera not positioned correctly, but we've also managed to lose all the audio for this piece of video. But this is a video where we replace the stock fan in the HP Gen 8 microserver with a 4 pin alternative that should be a bit more silent. By server standards, the HP Gen 8 microserver is in no way a loud machine, but if you're gonna spend a lot of time next to it, you might want to consider replacing some of the parts. The fan could be one of those. But to make life a bit more challenging, HP uses a custom 6-pin connector with 5 wires to connect their fans, so we're gonna have to craft an adapter. If you've seen our other videos on the HP Gen 8 microserver, you'll know that these servers do not run any of the supported HP processors that come with the server. My server uses an E3 1230v2 processor, which has a way higher TDP than the standard ones. And this actually ended up causing a bit of a problem for me. When we did this video, it was cold outside, quite cold in my apartment as well. But when spring got closer, the Nocta fan just didn't move enough air and the server ended up shutting down because the exhaust temperature was getting too high. So I've now replaced the fan with a fractal design fan that you'll find a link for in the video description. While well, summer is still getting here, and this could be a few degrees hotter in my apartment, I think that the fractal design fan will actually do the job, but this is something to take into consideration. If you use a fan that doesn't move enough air, in combination with the CPU that puts out a lot of heat, you will have a bad time. Getting the fan out is a pretty simple procedure, as you've already seen on the screen. If you don't have a tool available to undo the screws in the back, the tool that's in the front of the case will do just fine. Once the screws have been removed, just undo the cable and the fan will pop right out. If you've ever wondered what would happen if you told somebody who's never created a wiring diagram to do it, this is what they'd end up with. I just want to make clear that the connector are facing your way in this drawing even though some of the cables actually seem to come out in the front. But this is how we wired it all up. As you can see, the yellow wire on the 4-pin connector is not used for anything and both of the black wires as well as the yellow wire on the custom connector from HP are connected together. This should get everything up and running and you wouldn't get any warnings as long as you're using a 4-pin fan. If you want to have a closer look, I suggest you pause the video now. Instead of risking destroying two fans, we decided to only cut the fan that we needed. We cut the custom connector of the HP fan and took a spare 4-pin extender and created an adapter that would allow us to connect the 4-pin fan to the 6-pin connector on the motherboard. And then it's only the matter of putting things back together again. Make sure that the sticker on the fan faces backward so that the airflow is as designed. Plug the cable into the motherboard, use the screws that you used for the fan that came from HP, and put it together. We'll speed it up a bit for you. Time for the moment of truth. Will turning on the server actually make this fan turn over? Of course it would, but we weren't quite out of the woods yet. We needed to make sure that the Isla recognized the fan and didn't report any fan errors. And as you can see, the Isla identifies the fan just fine. If we go into the temperatures, you'll notice that these are quite high. They were with the original fan as well, and of course changing to a fan with a lower RPM won't change that. My target was to make it a bit easier sitting next to the server all day, and it most certainly did make a difference, unless you're under heavy load on the discs, which of course make a bit of noise. If you're the worrying kind, you might feel that these temperatures are a bit too high, and I get that. If you want to do this or not, it's completely up to you, I won't make a recommendation. These temperatures are using the Fractal Design fan that I've been using for a couple of months now, since it's been getting a bit hotter outside, and I think it will survive the summer. Even now, it's reporting 31 degrees in the room, which is quite high. If you're in a more well-ventilated area, you would surely see lower temperatures. That's all we have for you today. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. 
And as always, don't forget to subscribe.